the first step is to formulate the null and the alternative hypothesis uh, whenever we start off with significance testing the null hypothesis is uh, always the starting statement that whatever we are trying to test or whatever we are trying to prove or disprove we start off with the assumption that that is the estimate regarding the population for example if we want to test whether the population has a mean of 1000 or 10000 we formulate the null hypothesis such that the population mean is that uh, figure or is is 10000 right so whatever we are trying to test in the assumption in the null we always say that that is true right? the the next step is that we need to formulate the alternative hypothesis this is always as mentioned before if the exact uh, opposite of the null the null will stand true until uh, proven otherwise so the assumption is that till the time i have proof regarding uh, otherwise we're going to assume that the null is going to be true so for example when we are testing the population mean so we had made a contention that population mean is 10000 so the h not becomes that mu over the population mean is 10000 so till the time i have or we have any other proof which uh, says otherwise we're going to assume that this is going to be true assume it is true until proven otherwise right and then we formulate the alternative hypothesis the alternative hypothesis is that mu is not 10000 which is the exact opposite as we had mentioned so till the time we've disproven the null we're going to assume it is true right so the assumption is that the null stands until proven otherwise so till the time we have a sample which says something else regarding the population mean we are going to go with the starting statement that the mean of the population is 10,000 or 50,000 or whatever that number is. We had, uh, once the sample has been extracted and we have built the sampling distribution, we have looked at the standard error between the, high, the null hypothesis and the sample mean. At that time, we are going to go with either the null or the alternative. Now, bear in mind that uh, we have to select the confidence interval of the significance test as well. So in our previous example, we were testing at 1.96 standard errors around the hypothesized mean. So 1.96 standard error talks about a 95% confidence interval, right? So we're going to assume that in the sampling distribution that we've tried to make, right? So I'm going to go 1.96 standard errors on either way and create a acceptance region. So this is known as the acceptance region that in 95% of the samples are going to come around this region around the hypothesized mean in in case it goes outside the acceptance region of 95 which is the rejection region over here right we're going to reject but obviously i can change this 95 percent region into 99 so if it is 99 this region is actually going to be bigger so i'm going to accept more right so i can keep changing this interval right so this is known as the significance or the significance level so alpha is known as a significance level this is always the size of the rejection region so in case acceptance region is 95 the rejection region becomes 5% so we can say alpha is 5% of 0.05 when i say alpha of the test that we're going to conduct is 0 0.01 that means the confidence interval that i'm going to test it is 99% at 99% i'm going to be testing at roughly 2.57 standard errors around the hypothesized mean right so changing the value of alpha can actually also impact uh, the result of the test as well right so once we get the test statistic which is the number of standard errors separating the hypothesized mean from uh, the sample mean in terms of standard errors we check whether that is uh, less than the value of a critical which is either 2.57 or 1.96 depending on 95 99 of course we can test it at 90 percent level at 80 percent level at 50 percent level all of those would have uh, different uh, impacts as well right once we get that test statistic and we compare it against the critical value we either reject the null so in the previous test we had rejected the null because the standard the t value or the z value was coming out to be 64 standard errors away from the mean right which is way greater than the 1.96 which is our uh, 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 critical value so we reject the null hypothesis or if it is lies within the acceptance region i.e within this particular region over that is 1.96 standard errors so this uh, shaded region this is our acceptance region so this is the acceptance region so we're going to accept the claim so in this case 
we don't say that the null is proven we just say the null is failure to be rejected so there's a difference just because my sample says that uh, this particular distribution or this particular sample could have come from a population with mean 10000 that does not mean the population mean is 10000 right we can never prove uh, without uh, or we can never exactly prove any particular estimate regarding the population right we can only give a const uh, we can only give a confidence interval so i will never be able to prove that the population mean is actually 10000 by working with samples i can always say the population mean seems to be around 10000 or population mean is likely not to be 10000 right and around let's say whatever is the confidence interval 95 or 99 so i e we will never be able to prove the null we only say that we have rejected the null or we have failed to reject the null hypothesis. We can never prove the null hypothesis. However, failure to reject the null hypothesis typically is taken as the, uh, in real life it's taken as, yeah, you know, we will work with the null hypothesis. We are going to assume it is true. But statistically it means that we cannot, uh, we were not able to disprove. Failure to disprove does not mean the person uh, or the, sorry, the hypothesis is true. A close analogy is, uh, for example, just because uh, a person was uh, was uh, acquitted in the court of law, may, does not does not mean that the person did not commit the crime. It's simply that, you know, the prosecuting attorney was not able to prove the guilt. Failure to prove the guilt does not mean the person was not guilty. He may have actually done the crime, but we never ever able to, you know, prove the person. Uh, prove the guilt of the person. Therefore, it's the same thing in hypothesis testing. Failure to reject the null does not uh, mean that the null is true. It simply means, you know, that there is not enough proof to uh, reject the null. Similarly, in the legal case, you know, the person may or may not have committed the crime. We don't know, right? All we know is we fail to prove that the person committed the crime, right? So, same thing holds true in hypothesis testing as well. So, I'm going to move ahead to uh, the formal, uh, the formal uh, one sample test that we did uh, in our previous example, one sample Z or T test. The formula over here is X bar minus mu naught divided by sigma over under root n, which gives us the test statistic, the Z or the T. So this is similar to what we did. Right. So this formula that uh, we've got over here for calculating the Z test or the Z value is X bar minus mu naught divided by sigma over under root n which is x bar minus mu naught divided by standard deviation by under root n. So we know this value is actually the standard error. So this essentially becomes x bar minus mu naught divided by the standard error of the distribution. So what is x bar? x bar is the sample mean. It is the mean of the sample that we have managed to extract from the population. Mu naught is the hypothesized The hypothesized population mean or it is the claim that we are testing so what this uh, formula essentially does is it 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 calculates the distance between these two terms in terms of standard errors right so if I want to draw it out what it does is let's say that my claim was that the mean population mean is some value mu naught right and I actually have uh, generated a sample which is x bar Right. So I know the sampling distribution works like this. Right. And I calculate the distance between these two. So distance between these two is going to be x bar minus mu naught. Right. And in terms of standard errors, how many standard errors is this away from each other? So I divide this by the value of standard error. So this gives me the number of standard errors which separate my population mean or the hypothesized population mean with the sample mean that I have got. If this distance is less than 1.96 right so if this distance is less than 1.96 it means that it is within the 95 percent probability level right ie such a mean or such a sample mean can come from a higher this particular population mean ie we are likely to get this difference between the means within the 95 percent confidence interval around the population mean. if this value is actually greater than 1.96 right what it essentially means is that such a sample where the mean is x bar is unlikely to come from a population mean where the mean is mu naught. In 95% in of the cases, 
this is not going to happen i.e. such a sample has actually come from a different population or our initial hypothesis regarding the sample the population mean is wrong right so this is how we are actually going to work with the uh, hypothesis testing we are going to formulate h0 h0 is going to be that whatever is uh, our mu0 our mu0 is a value let's say 10 ha let's say mu0 is not equal to 10 right so this is our null hypothesis this is our alternative hypothesis and i check out that the sample mean x bar came out to be 11 and my standard deviation came out to be let's say value s and the sample size was n therefore i can calculate the t test so i'm going to go very small over here but you know i'm going to roll over here so it comes out to be that 10 minus 11 divided by s over under root n right i will get some value over if this value the mod of this value is less than 1.96 that means this particular sample sample mean could have actually been extracted from such a population in 95% of the cases so this claim is true otherwise the claim is rejected right obviously when i mean the claim is true it means that i failed to disprove the hypothesis that the population mean is 10 the sample that we've extracted could have very likely come from such a population if this value is greater than 1.96 the mod of this value in that case we reject the or the null and go with the alternative so I'm going to continue and uh, and uh, do a series of uh, exercises on uh, PROC T test now. So we're going to go ahead and uh, you know actually perform this uh, Z oblique T test on SAS, SPSS, Statistica as well R in our next uh, set of videos. And uh, we're also going to talk about what do we mean by p-value and a little more on acceptance and rejection region as well.